saviors are arising in Zion. And they are going to deal with every mount of Esau. The Bible says the vision of Obadiah that says the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a report from the Lord and a messenger has been sent among the nations saying, Arise and let us rise up against her for battle. Go to the next one. Obadiah 1, 2. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be greatly despised. Uh-huh. Then pride, the pride of your heart has deceived you, you who dwell in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high. You who say in your heart, who will bring me down to the ground? So that tells me the Edomites or the Mount of Esau, uh, these are people that inhabited in high grounds. Are we together? Uh, let's go to four. Though you ascend as high as the eagle, and though you set your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, says the Lord. If thieves had come to you, if robbers by night, oh, how you will be cut off. Will they not have stolen till they had enough? If grapes gatherers had come to you, will they not have left some gleanings? Oh, how Esau shall be searched out, how his hidden treasures shall be sought after. All the men in your, conf in, in your confederacy shall force you to be to the border. The men at peace with you shall deceive you and prevail against you. Those who eat your bread shall lay a trap for you. No one is aware of it. Will I not in that day, says the Lord, even destroy the wise men from Edom and understanding from the mountains of Esau? Then your mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that everyone from the mountains of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, this week we are dealing with the mountains of Esau. For violence against your brother Jacob, shame shall cover you and you shall be cut off forever. In the, in the day that you stood on the other side, in that day, the strangers carried captive his forces. When foreigners entered his gates and cast lot for Jerusalem, even you were as one of them. But you should not have guessed on the day of your brother, in the day of his captivity, nor should you have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction, nor should you have spoken proudly in the day of distress. You should not have entered the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Indeed, you should not have guessed on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. You should not have stood at the crossroad to cut off those among them who escaped, nor should you have delivered up those among them who remained in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord upon all the nation is near. As you have done, it shall be done to you. you your reprisal shall return upon you, upon your own head. For as you drank on my holy mountain, so shall all the nation drink continually. Yes, they shall drink and swallow, and they shall be as though they had never been. But on Mount Zion there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. The house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. The house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame, but the house of Esau shall be stumble. They shall kindle them and devour them and no survivor shall remain of the house of Esau for the Lord has spoken. The south shall possess the mountain of Esau and the lowland shall possess Philistia. They shall possess the field of Ephraim and the field of Samaria. Benjamin shall possess Gilead. And the captives of the host of the children of Israel shall possess the land of the Canaanites as far as Zerapharth. The captives of Jerusalem who are in Shephard, who are in Zerapharth, shall possess the cities of the south. And now we come to 21. Everybody read. Now, the best thing to do when you're reading a prophetic book Number one is to know the meaning of the name of the prophet. All prophets had meanings. And sometimes their meaning uh, was just something spiritual to give us intelligence on the book. Obadiah means Yahweh's servant. Now, a servant of God 
is releasing an announcement over the house of Esau. Are we together? I'll give you historical background so that you understand why he's writing what he's writing. And, and in this historical background, we'll have to go back to Genesis and locate Esau. Are we together? But the history of the book of Obadiah, it is written in a time where the children of Israel had already been taken captivity into Babylon. And the children of uh, Esau lived between Egypt and Babylon. And their main assignment, they used to control the business of caravans in that particular journey. So anyone that crossed through their borders, that's how they made their money. It was a desert land. So they were not farmers, but they, they, they dealt with the business people that uh, came from Babylon all the way to Egypt. That's where they lived. And where they lived, they lived on mountainous places. One of the benefits of living in the mountains is that it was very hard to be attacked. Because you'll see the enemy coming and you'll gather. Number two, not only were they living in the mountain, they were living in the clefts. A cleft is a crack within a rock. And that assures your security. There is a movie called, I think, 300. For the lovers of movie. And it is 300 soldiers who found a cleft, a, a gap in a rock. And out of that, while the other soldiers were coming, they formed a formation. And so it was easy to hold their shields. And as the soldiers are coming, they just kill them and dump them aside. So 300 men almost massacred 10,000 men. And they believe that concept of 300 came from the story of Gideon. Now, it means if you live in a cleft, you have an advantage. Because one, security is guaranteed. When you live on mountainous places, you also have an advantage because you can see the enemy coming. Now, the problem was, this was a relative of Jacob. And when the Babylonians entered into Jerusalem, the destruction of Jerusalem was so severe. It is believed historically, some of the Esau, the seed of Esau, they were very much in participation with the Babylonian. That any time they saw an Israelite run from the Babylonian, they captured and took them back to Babylon. So they betrayed their own. Number two, the Israelite passed through their land while going to Babylon. So the Lord is trying to look at this brother and tell them, you have abandoned your brother because you lived in a high place. And at that time, though I was judging them, you did not intervene. You also became a partaker of what they were going through. It is also believed they went and plundered Jerusalem. After the Babylonian took what they took, they went and plundered Jerusalem and took some things. And now when the prophet is writing, he's also telling them what they did which was wrong. Now, when you read Obadiah with that background, you will understand why the Lord is saying, I shall raise saviors in another high place called Zion. Now, you need to know, in the New Testament, Zion is the church. And so, it is a prophetic picture of where the church should be and what the church should be doing. So, in this week, we are going to unravel the mystery of the high places. Because it's good for us to understand what it means to be on higher grounds. Hallelujah. And so we have to go back all the way from Abraham to understand the seed of Esau. Is that okay? So let's look at Genesis 18. I believe it's there. So I've given the historical background. I discovered most of the books in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament. Once you get the historical background, they begin to open up. And the stories now become very accurate. Otherwise, I tell you, you can read. Like this book, you can read and not get anything. But just small history opens up your mind. And revelations begin to flow. Genesis 18, 9, verse 5. Genesis 18, 9, verse 5. We'll be very quick today. Many scriptures need to come. Genesis 18. If they're not getting it, we can go back to the... Yes. Then they say to him, where is Sarah your wife? Remember, this is when God visited the home of Abraham. And God, Abraham, is concerned because 
He does not have a person to inherit what he needs. So he's a wealthy man without a person to inherit what he has. And so God visits him. The Bible says three men were coming, but they worshipped one. Huh. That is to tell me three men came, but Abraham knew who the Lord was. And at that hour, you read this story. It is not the servants that prepared the meal for God. Abraham and his wife took the responsibility. Because when you have an important guest in your house, I tell you, you cannot entrust that visitation with a house girl. You cannot try. So it, he, he said to the servants, get it. But now Sarah is the one who was working on it. So they say, where is Sarah, your wife? So that he said, here in the tent, listen to me. This was not about a physical location. It was about a spiritual location. Because what God was about to tell the family, they needed to be together in the spirit. So God has to confirm the position of the wife. Because God is about to speak. Let's go to 10. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. <laughs> this is a mystery. Because, number one, you need to know, Sarah was barren, but Abraham was not barren. When the prophecy came, Abraham was not barren. We know it. He slept with Haggai, and he got a baby boy. So he was not barren. But at this time, when God is releasing his prophecy, well, let, let's look at Romans, I believe, 4, 4. Romans 4, 18. Let me show you the status of Abraham. Romans 4, 18. Who contrary to hope in hope? Now, hope is a confident expectation towards something. Now, the reason why the writer is saying contrary to hope is because when God gave a prophecy to Abraham, he was 75. He was able to have a child because he slept with Hagar and got a child. Have you ever realized you have no problem believing in God when he speaks in the time of your ability? I don't need to struggle with faith when God tells me at the age of 30, a revival is coming. But I have a problem when he shows up at 70 and tells me you will carry revival. When I feel I don't have the power, at 30 I will jump. Guess what? Most of us, God speaks to us in the hour of our ability. But he shows up in the hour of your inability. For it to be a miracle, he must go beyond your ability. And that's why the first phase of prophetic ministry is not hard to believe. Wait until time elapses and you are relocated and now you're in a place where you have to hope against hope. Because in that time, the man was a hundred years old. Let's see. So, so that he became the father in hope believed. So that he became the father of many nations. According to what was spoken, so shall your descendant be. Uh, let's look at 19. This one is where the meat is. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead. Since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. Listen, when God shows up at this hour and tells them, I will visit you according to the time of life. The man was a hundred years old. So he was dead, no seed. Sarah's womb was also dead. And that's why he calls Abraham. And ask him, where is your wife? Concerning this matter of deadness. Because at this hour, you don't just need a child. The first thing, you need the ability first. Because you, even the ability to bear is gone. So he was trying to tell them, not only will I come with a child, but I'll visit you in the time of life. Because for you to bear a child, you need to be alive hallelujah you see there are places you enter and life proves to you it is impossible because of time but when God visits a man in the time of life guess what he does he suspends the reality of time time has a reality I tell you there is what men call time frame 
But when Jehovah enters, he can suspend the reality of time for his agenda to be established. It is never too late with God. So he tells him, according to the time of life. You guys, I know you are dead. All of you are dead. What, the first thing you need is life. Vitality, ability to bear children. May someone enter that level. You know, when we look at our world, our reality, there are visions you can surrender because according to time, it is impossible. But when you serve God, the time of God is not the one we use. Someone said, men created watches, but it is God who created time. So leave your watch and allow the one that has power over time to begin to navigate your life and interfere and intervene in your life. So let's go back to that scripture. So now, God promises a child. God promises a child. Uh, so where was Sarah in the tent, which was behind him? Uh -huh. Then he said to him, where is Sarah, your wife? So he said, here in the tent. God knew, God is all knowing. So he knew where Sarah was. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door which was behind him. Are you seeing that position? Do you know what a door represents in the spirit? A place of prayer. Time can elapse but never leave the tent door. Never leave the place of prayer. Because visitations happen there. I tell you, if Abraham was in a different place, they would have missed God. If he was looking after his, his own business, because even where Abraham was, for him to see, he was in a position. Ah. The greatest battle sometimes is for you to lose your ground. Do you know where, where Lot was? He was at the gates of Sodom. When the angels came to destroy, they met at the gate. What is a gate? A place of prayer. The Bible says, and God had the wickedness of Sodom. How did God hear? Someone was telling him in prayer. So he came to see. <laughs> so he tells me, Lord must be, uh, have been an intercessor of Sodom. Because he was at the gates. And the one that stood at the gates was delivered. The, your position matters. Hallelujah. There is a young man who discovered his shot. When people show up, that's when you know how short you are. Otherwise, you are tall. Right now, you are very tall. Until some tall men show up and you discover you are short. And when he discovered he was short, guess what? He climbed a tree. It's called a sycamore tree. I believe, I believe it was not a coincidence. That tree existed there prophetically. And someone knew the prophetic assignment of that tree was to give me visibility. As I see the king, he will also see me. And guess what? All the people that are working with Jesus, one man got a visitation. May you locate a place in the spirit where whatever is going to happen, you will not sin, do not pass me by. Where you will be, he cannot pass you because you are in a position that you cannot be ignored. Because there are men that miss their moment of visitation because of their location. May God program you. The child Jesus was to be born in Bethlehem. But their location was contrary. Guess what? The king, Caesar, had to announce census. My God. The whole nation had to be disrupted for a couple to be found in Bethlehem. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know, yeah. Now, you have to juicy to Nelewa. Imagine the president announcing census in the third year because there is someone in Kakamega and they need to be in Mombasa. And the rule come, you must go home. So that when you are play, appear in your place, you can bath what God had ordained because every vision has a destination. Some people are struggling in Nairobi. This is not your place. Maybe where you left, that's your Bethlehem. Who said making it is in the city? No. Pray, Google, and ask the Lord, where do you want me to be? There are so many people. Nairobi is overpopulated because of the city mentality. Uh, as I'm pre praying, preaching like this, I know there are people who are being fired and being transferred. Where you belong. In this season, just flow with the anointing and allow him to position you where you belong. So a prophecy came. 
And God is not just a promise giver. He's a God that keeps his word. So they begot a child. They got Isaac. Hallelujah. They got who? Isaac. But before Isaac, guess who came? Ishmael. What was the prophecy upon Abraham? You shall be a father of many nations. So who was carrying the seed? Abraham. So where did the prophecy fall? On every seed of Abraham. So whatever Abraham gave birth to became a nation. Because the anointing in his life was national. Whatever he birthed became a nation. Ishmael, let's look at Genesis 21. Ishmael became a nation. I know many people have preached about Ishmael in the wrong way. 21.8. Genesis 21, 8. So the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the same day that Isaac was weaned. So the child is born here. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, who she had born to Abraham's coffee. Now, whose idea was it that Abraham should go to Hagar? Sarah, the wife, amen? Ah, you know, I discovered I'm married. I discovered women are very spiritual, but sometimes they are very carnal. So the role of a man is to be very spiritual, to know when they are carnal and when they are spiritual. I tell you the truth. There are times they speak prophetically. There are times they speak emotionally. When Sarah told Abraham to take her guy, it was not prophecy. It was emotion. And you can imagine that conversation. You know, babes come. I'm the problem. And you know women own all the problem. Even what they've not done, they will find a way of owning it so that they can be peace. And I can imagine that dinner set up. You know, I love you. I want the best for you. I am the problem. I understand. Do they say like that? I understand. But they don't understand. I understand. It is okay. In this matter, you just take the house guard. You know, prosper. And Abraham had his wife. Now when her womb was opened is when we know Sarah was not understanding Because when her child was being winged, see what she says. Uh -huh. Therefore, she said to Abraham, cast out this bond woman <laughs> and her son. For the son of this bond woman shall not be heir with my son, namely with Isaac. Uh -huh. Go to 11. Do you know what a bond woman is? At that time it was Hagar. This time it's a house girl, a slave. <laughs> She's even lost her title and position. And she has to show Abraham, you are a married man, married to a woman that has given birth to you. This bond woman and a child, they must go. <laughs> and the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. Because this was the son of Abraham. And, and guess, Abraham went to God. Uh -huh. But God said to Abraham, do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your born woman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, this is what God is saying. You had her the first time. Even now, listen to her. <laughs> so don't report her to me. You deal with her now. Me, I've done my part. <laughs> listen to her voice. For in Isaac, your seed shall be called. Shall be called. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the born woman because he's here. Remember what God prophesied. He said, you shall be a father of many nations. So the prophecy is now manifesting whatever Abraham gave birth to became a nation. So Ishmael must become a nation. Let's look. And remember God had a covenant with Abraham. And so because of his covenant, whatever was in Abraham entered into a covenant also. Because the Bible says when he gave a tithe, even Levi tithed in his loins. So when he made a covenant, what was in him also entered in that covenant. So if the covenant was to prosper, even Ishmael must prosper. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and skin of water and putting it on her shoulder, he gave it and the boy, uh, uh, he gave it and the boy to Hagar and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Bathsheba. And the water in the skin was used up. And she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about a bow shoot. For she said to herself, let me not see the death of the boy. So she sat opposite him and lifted her voice and wept. So who was weeping here? The mother 
Okay. Uh -huh. And God heard the voice. Give me NIV. That name lad is too complex for Kenyans. NIV. Uh -huh. Everybody read. Now listen. The mother was crying. And the boy was crying. God is a God of covenant. He did not have a covenant with Hagar. He had a covenant with Abraham and his seed. So the tears of Hagar did not move God. It was the tears of Ishmael that made God respond. My God, if you understand as a church, you have a covenant with God. Listen, in the Old Testament, God entered into covenant with men. No man in the Old Testament kept the covenant. In the New Testament, God has not entered a covenant with anyone but himself. He gave himself on the cross, shed his own blood, then invited you to the new covenant. So that tells me, when you enter in the new covenant, it cannot fail. Because it is not your loyalty that makes him move. It is your understanding of the covenant that makes him move. That is why he said, in this new covenant, we are under grace and works. It is the revelation of grace. Knowing no sacrifice can you raise. You cannot even match up the sacrifice of Calvary. It is by love, by mercy, that he looked at you and invited you for the new covenant so that you can be a partaker with him. So the Lord heard the cry of Ishmael because there was a covenant between God and Abraham and the seed of Abraham also automatically entered into that covenant. May there be a realization of the new covenant that we are in. We never just came to church to say Lord Jesus. It was not a ritualistic prayer. It is the greatest miracle to enter into the New Testament where we can now go beyond the veil and worship him as he is. So God heard the cry of the child and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, what is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. So because of the boy, Hagar was preserved. Because of a child that carried a covenant. The child didn't know. You can imagine. Ishmael was innocent crying. But the mother has to be preserved. Huh. 18. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand for I will make him into a great nation. Because whatever Abraham gave birth to, then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. <sighs> so the well was there. But someone had to cry for her eyes to be opened. Some things are a cry away. They have been in their existence. <laughs> God did not create a well. God opened her eyes to see a well. It was not very far from her. It was just in her proximity. But they were almost dying. Until a voice of a child with a covenant raised a cry. May the Lord open our eyes. Some of us, our solution is not very firm. It is just very close. But as we begin to understand covenant, our eyes are opened in the spirit and we begin to know where the solution is. Revelation. You know the Bible says, Jesus went with these two men. They didn't know who he was. Though he was very close. They ascended to the upper room. He broke bread. What is that? A picture of breaking the word. And their eyes were open. And they said, you are Christ. Guess what? Revelation opens the eyes of men. And some things begin to become illegal. You know, whatever you hear. Do you know what the Bible says? Faith cometh by hearing. Comma. So faith is a general word. You can have faith in Buddha if you hear Buddha. You can have faith in Mohammed if all you hear is Mohammed. You can have faith in witches if all you hear is witches. You can have faith in deliverance if all you hear is deliverance. Reynald Bonke said, deliver the word and the word will deliver the people. I tell you there are people who go to a deliverance meeting and they are ready to puke. Because they believe the demon has affected their food. And they vomit and they are not delivered. Because they didn't hear revelation to open their eyes to see who they are. 
May there be an opening of our eye, even as we are breaking this bread of life. May some veils of religion, some veils be taken out of your eye to see Christ as he is. Uh, so he gave the boy and the journey continued. Now let's go a little bit further. So he lived in the desert. I want to show you this was a real child of Abraham. Because in Genesis 25 verse 9, Abraham dies and the two nations meet. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him. Let, let's look at something there uh, from verse 1. You know, some of you don't know Abraham had other children. Abraham took another wife whose name was Keturah. Uh -huh. She bore him Zimran, Joshkan, Medan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Joshkan was the father of Sheba and Dedan. The descendants of Dedan were the Ashurites and the Letushites and the Leuminites. Hey. The sons of Midian were Epha, Epha, Anok, Abida, Elda. All these were descendants of Keturah. Abraham left everything he owned to Isaac. Inheritance. Because he was the child of promise. Are you seeing all the child, even the children he got with Keturah became nations? <laughs> Be aware of what you carry. Lest you multiply it in the wrong way. If Abraham knew he would have preserved that seed. Now we have to deal with Ishmael. Because God cannot go against his word. They have to be a nation. And they are wandering with swords in the wilderness. You know who they are. <laughs> but I pray that they will meet at the grave of Abraham one day. Okay. Uh, go to six. But while he was still living, he gave, everybody read, gifts to the sons of his and sent them away from his son Isaac to the land of the east. Do you know where the east is? Yes. Uh -huh. So what were they given? Gifts. But all that Abraham had was given to Isaac. What was the all? All the prophecy, the anointing that he carried, the ability to raise nations was released in Isaac. All. But while he was still living here yeah, and sent them to the land of the east. Altogether, Abraham lived 175 years. Then Abraham breathed his last and died at a good old age. An old man and full of years and he was gathered to his people. These are prophetic people. His sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Mechflah near the Mamre in the field of Ephron, son of Zohar, the Hittite. I believe this is a prophetic picture that one day something will make us gather at the same place with the people of the east. If you have prophetic ears, you can hear. Because Ishmael and Isaac gathered at the grave of Abraham. This time not as rivals. Now, later you go to this story. Isaac is born. I mean, Isaac gets a wife, Rebecca. Can we look at our scripture? Then you go and we pick it up from there. <laughs> hey, let's look at Genesis 25, 21 to 25. Tomorrow I'll take time and show you Jacob was not a thief. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was barren. The Lord answered his prayer and his wife Rebecca became. Now when you're teaching family patterns, that's where you pick some few things. The babies jostled each other with her and she said, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. See what the Lord says. Everybody read. The Lord said to her, When Abraham gave all, Isaac could not give birth to twins. He could only give birth to nations. He received an impartation to release nations. And the Lord comes and tells Rebecca, two nations are in your womb, two of them. And even tell them the direction. One people will be stronger than the other. Who did God speak to? Rebecca. So there are two possibilities. Rebecca knew what was happening, but she never shared with Isaac. 
So when she was planning with Jacob to get the blessing, she knew the prophecy. The Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb and two people from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other and the older will serve the younger. Go to 24. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red and his whole body was like a hairy garment. So they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out with his hand grasping Esau. So, so the battle began in the womb. <laughs> so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was a quiet man staying among the tents, a man of prayer. <laughs> One was a random guy in the fields. The other one was a quiet man carrying a prophecy. Uh, the story there is good. Isaac, who had test of wild game, loved Esau, but Rebecca loved. Rebecca knew something that Isaac did not know. You know, even when Gabriel spoke to Mary and he said to Mary, the one you carry is a special seed. Do you know what the Bible says? She kept the matter in her heart. Sometimes you need to take a woman for a date and ask her, what is in your heart? <laughs> what has the Lord spoken? Because I tell you, maybe you are planning to buy a plot, but the Lord told her, that place is not where we will live. But she has kept the matter in her heart. And as you are struggling, she knows you will not end up there. And the day you come home with a bad report, she goes to the kitchen praising and saying, Jehovah is your name. We knew this was not in your will, but the man was so stubborn, I could not fight him. Uh, if you're sitting next to your woman, tell that woman, I know there are matters in your heart. <laughs> this is a fact. Are we getting it? So, so Rebecca never shared it with Isaac. It was a big thing. Uh, so go to 29. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came from the open country, famished. He said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. That is why he was called Edom. Now, Edom became a nation by itself, the Edomites. So he was finished. He was tired. So he asked for the Jacob replied, first sell me your birthright. So was he given the birthright? Yes. So when he went to Isaac, did he steal it? They had a negotiation. Was there a prophecy that the younger shall rule over the older? Yes. So the one who told us Jacob is a thief, I think we need to go back to Bible and ask ourselves, what did he steal? And tomorrow we look at what a birthright is, a blessing is, because blessings are not things. You read this story. After Isaac blessed Jacob, he left with nothing as he was running from Esau. Nothing. Nothing. Some of you have nothing, but you have blessings. Amen. So blessings are not things. I'm saying this intentionally. You know, a good movie has to end at a place of suspense so that tomorrow you can come and pick it up from there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.